Section two, and uh, where you're discussing competence. Yes. Competence. Character was last week. Yep. Competence is this week. All right. But it's only half of the competence, right? Yeah, we're only discussing half the chapter yeah. because there's like too many. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. We're ready? Let's go. Let's do this. Right, let's do this. Three. It's all good. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Three, two, one. Everyone, welcome back to the Made for More Consulting podcast. Mario here with Adina. Adina, welcome back. I am so excited to be here. We are offsite. Etienne's on the couch. Hello. Now. I love this like offsite business. We were offsite last week. We're offsite this week. Yes. We should make this a habit. Let's no. travel. Let's have a traveling podcast. I'm good with the, with not doing that. Um, okay. Episode fifty six tonight. Welcome 56. back to everyone. We actually fifty six back on YouTube. Yeah, fifty six. Episode fifty six. Um, we will have, uh, this will more than likely be the biggest month of the podcast. Uh, and I love, I feel like that every, every month, or like periodically you say that you're like, oh, this yeah. is the biggest one. Yeah. Cause I think the most downloads in a month, month was like 556 or like 516. We have a few days I love left. that. Oh, well, this is a good one. I think, um, I told Etienne last night that I actually forgot to do the lowdown. Mm -hmm. I had it on, I, I had it on my to-do list and just didn't do it. So, you know, sometimes things happen. Give yourself some grace. <laughs> yeah. So, um, we are covering Iron Sharpened Leadership. It is the second section called Competence. We're only covering half the section because there's so many chapters. Yeah, and I, you know, I said this last week, and I will say it again, that this book is very, very underrated. I know. And, and this is one of, I, I, you know, every time when I, like, every time I sit down and read, it's like, it's just like a bunch of words, and then he, like, says something. And I'm like, that is down. so good. Yeah. And then some words, and then he says something. Yep. I mean, I he, just. He has a lot of good things he in here. Does. That, that I would read this book with the staff. Well, yes. And, you know, what? one of the things I kind of wonder is I almost feel like if he would have had somebody help him write this book, mm -hmm. um, like, highlight different things, I think <clears> that, like, because, like, he'll say a quote, and I'm like, that is amazing. Yeah, it's a really and he just quote. skims over it like it's nothing. <laughs> yeah. like, I just love it because it's all the leadership things that we've talked about, whether it was Leaders Eat Last, Start With Why, Atomic Habits, uh, any of the Jacko stuff. Of leadership. Yeah, all they of all, them, all in one. Yeah. Yeah. And the, uh, what was the one? When you're leading when you're not in charge. Yes, leading when you're not in charge. I, yeah. well, that, that's a good book. What do you? Well, I was like, oh, oh there, all your books those, are, are, those are the books I want to read this year. What, so, did we say we were covering mindset at some point? Was I said one? we should. The talent code mindset, you're a badass, nudge. And then the bottom two are not what? ones that we would cover. You're a badass, nudge? Nudge is the name. <laughs> oh. But it's about you're badass. I'm reading you're a badass, badass right now. Right. Yeah. It's a different book. book. It's yeah. not called yeah. Your Badass yeah. Nudge. No. Yeah, I mean, okay. that might be a good nickname, though. <laughs> nudge. Uh, okay. <laughs> What's up, so, nudge? So, uh, second section of this book competence. Yeah. Um, Chapter 13. Yeah. Well, before we go on, remember we're not reading the entire book, uh, so go read, go buy this book. Actually, I was thinking today on For the sure. drive over here that maybe we should like give these books away. I thought the same thing. I thought that before that we. I mean, like, part of me is like I would give away my book with, like after I read all my notes and, and all stuff the notes, in it. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I would give. I would give it away. 
I, I don't know. I really like this one. I don't know if I can let this, yeah, this one go. Book, but, we should um, buy this for some people and just. But we should. I I do think. I think every <clears throat> for every book, I think we should at least give one. Every book that we cover, we should at least give, give one away. book away. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I did finish leading on empty last night. I, you know what? We have another friend that's reading that, and every time I see her with it, I'm like, I really need to read that. I just finished. I really need to read. I that. would give you this one, but uh, I think I'm giving this one to Raph. I Robinson. think. Well, is that a book that we would cover? I think so. Okay. I really do think so. Yes. Um, it's it's an amazing book. Yeah, then you'll just so. buy me one and we'll be good. Yep. <laughs> um, so here we go. If you haven't, this is your first time listening to, uh, to the Made For More Consulting podcast, please go back and listen to episode one, uh, where we didn't know how to record podcasts and the sound was terrible. You know what? It happens. But then That's also- good stuff. Episode what? 27? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so go back and listen to those. They're really good to catch you up on who we are. And you know, throughout um, all of the episodes, there's a couple of them that we did like some Q and A's. Yeah. And those are ones that I've had people come back and say, "Hey, I finally listened to this, and it was really good." So I think that the Q and A's might be undervalued. Yeah, the Q and A's are really good. The uh, the guests that we had on. Yeah. Well, good. and I told you. Um, a couple weeks ago, I actually listened to the one with you and John, mm -hmm. um, and I started the one with you and Jay. I haven't haven't finished it because my other podcasts keep going up before Come that. Well, listen, I'm really into the crime podcast right now. I know that's, that's I know, I know, I know. I just I can't there is, help it. There is a guy out there that is not shaming, but he's trying to tell people to stop glamorizing the well, fugitive this is what i yes i've heard that because what it's doing to society mm -hmm. and to younger kids yeah. going oh they listen to this so that's right they're going to talk about me thing. i've heard that especially when they talk about like when they had the school shootings mm -hmm. you know like don't, don't cover don't names. yeah don't cover the shooter yeah. um but i also have, i've been listening to several different types of podcasts because i feel like it it's kind of educational to me yeah you i know? mean jocko is this yeah he's, he's covering well, a book about vietnam and how McNamara, the attorney general, just screwed uh, the under um, the poor and the ra and how racial it was and how they used mentally retarded uh, people and they sent them over there and they got killed and th their families couldn't protest it because there was a draft yeah. and how if you were upper class you could uh, dodge it or just say I have a doctor's note or I'm going to the university but if you were underclass or the poor, you couldn't say that, so they took you. Mm -hmm. And it's 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 disgusting yeah, it's what you terrible. hear. Anyways, but it's historical. Like yes, saying. when I think that I when I listen to like even some of those crime ones, I listen to some of the things that they do and the way that they say things, and I'm like, I don't like to hear that, or I don't yeah. like that. So <laughs> hopefully, it makes us better. Yeah. So yeah, whatever podcast you listen to, maybe that's a question we can ask: is what podcast? Yeah. When I to. also have you know learned the value in like skipping thirty seconds ahead, you know, so you don't have to listen to certain parts. I just. Play it's it a, it is a great five, thing. That's what I do on my fast. Audible. When I listen to books, I always do it faster. Yeah. But I haven't done that on a podcast. Awesome. So here we go. Chapter 13. Section 2, Confidence. Chapter 13 is called Not Everyone Deserves a Mentor. And I'm going to start it's right wild. here by saying I have I cannot think of one leadership book that anybody has ever said not everyone deserves a mentor. Yeah. And even the fact that we're going to, what we're going to talk about this is that he talks about, it's not about being a mentor. It's about the, the mentee, mentee. Yep. which is another thing that nobody talks about, which a couple of years ago, um, I think it might've been at a training or something we did. We talked about this, mm -hmm. about like the role in mentorship, how the accountable part, yeah. you know, the responsibility part is on the mentee. Yep. And so often people try to flip that. Mm -hmm. And I think to me, this chapter is probably my favorite other book so far. So good. Because I, it, again, it's, it, I think people want to feel important to be a mentor, but even as a mentor, you better be a mentee. Like you better be learning. And, and again, he starts off with one of my quotes that I wrote down, I'll read real quick. It says, those who do not keep their eyes and ears open and look for the opportunity to seek mentorship do not deserve to be mentored. So basically, if you're not coachable, then you shouldn't have a mentor. Like, right. We should. And if you aren't willing to put the work in, like I loved in this little part, he said, uh, you know, I can't, I'm not going to quote it word for word, but he was like, when you go, you turn off your phone, you bring a notebook. You yeah, write, I mean, like, step, he, right? Yes. Yeah. He was like, you take it serious. Mm -hmm. Like you are there getting information and knowledge mm -hmm. and wisdom from them 
take it serious. Be respectful. I was yeah. like, dang. I think for me, you and I, I mean, all three of us are probably in meetings, and it's, uh, it's to me, it's not frustrating. I think it's annoying more so for me to see someone on their phone if they're not taking notes, um, but they're being a distraction. And I don't want a distraction, but it is positive for it. It, it gives me positive reinforcement to go. Oh, when they see, I see them writing. Mm -hmm. But if I see that they're typing in their notes, totally get it. But if they're being the distraction, and, and right? And you can it. tell the difference when somebody gets a text and <laughs> yeah. picks up their phone and yeah. starts looking at I'm it. I'm totally guilty of that. You know, and so yeah, yes, you are. Like Dina just did. Yes. Well, I know. Yeah. I was actually, <laughs> I was actually <laughs> doing like I was going to do an example, and then I had two texts, yeah. so I was like, well, I um, think about that. <laughs> but I think for me is, uh, again, taking taking notes anytime someone's talking to you, man, be respectful. Take some notes. And I feel like that's something that you model really well. I, I, I don't, don't go anywhere without yes. the notepad. And, and you really do. Like you, that yeah. is something you always have your notepad. And you're always, um, you're never like distracting or disrespectful. Like I feel like when you're, I've been in a lot of meetings mm -hmm. with you. That you're actually writing down things about the meeting, yeah. and even if you're not, you play it off really well. I, I, you know, I don't know how to play off because well, sometimes no. I'm not, sometimes I'll be making my grocery list. I mean, and that is not. You know how difficult it is it to be in a room with John Evans there yes, to be oh, a three-hour meeting. Mm -hmm. I oh, I know. And it's sometimes those meetings go really long. You're ridiculous. Really. That's really the other thing. What'd you say? And so that's why I got my job. My boss said he knew I was the one because I was taking notes when he was telling me something. Okay. And Etiana is like way even like above your average note taker. She, I think she like transcribes. She writes down like every single word that you say. Um, I dropped my lid. That's okay. But it's all good. It'll be um, okay. I think one of the things that uh, <clears throat> you got to be careful with uh, is, and I'm going to use John as an example. He doesn't mind. But like seriously, like if he's leading, he he has a he has a team of volunteers that he leads. So as we're in staff meetings, he's typing out the email, mm -hmm. which is a good idea. Yes. But if it's if you're typing louder than the speaker, then uh -huh. there's probably well, and issue. the thing is, is a, just I was just in a meeting with John this week, and um, we were in the meeting, and we, you, we were talking. There was like four of us, and I was talking, and John was looking at me, and he was typing, and I'm like. John, I know that you are not typing what I'm saying. Like yeah. you're still working. And I said, I'm okay with that. Like this meeting that we're in, it's a different kind of meeting. Yeah. I'm okay with that. He's like, oh no, no. And he would still keep typing. Yeah. I'm like, John. Yeah. That. But he he does do so, he does a really good job of typing up. He uh, yes. And so like my notepad is his, he uses a keyboard. So but again, it's he talks about just keeping your eyes open, your ears open. Um, who know for people who know more about life than you. And mm -hmm. he just, he also goes the next step and says, ask them to share their information and experiences. So yeah. one that takes courage to go out and say, Hey, can you share this information, um, with me, uh, and mentorship? He says it's, it's, uh, the definition is developing future leaders. Well, and I wrote on that, like a note on there is, I think even for me is it is developing future leaders, like within the organization, but I look at it as more as developing people. Yeah. You know, um, it's like personal development, personal development is yeah. I feel like that there are people in my life who they are leaders, mm -hmm. but that's not, I'm not developing them to be a leader. I'm exactly. developing them to be better, better the best yep. that version of themselves. Yeah. And that's what, again, making yeah. more is all about. I think that regardless of what client we have, if they ask us to come help them, we're going to help them with the product, but it's about the people. So we're going to say sure. like it, it slab, for example, it's not about the sandwich. It's about being a team player and being the best team player you can be and yeah. help helping around. Uh, so what, what do you look for when you're in mentorship? When when you want somebody to mentor you, what do you look for? Well, you know, time? one of the things I loved, loved, loved that he talks about is that he talks about how mentorship is, is a 365. So mm -hmm. it's everybody around you, yeah. you know? And uh, <laughs> you're just sending me a funny text. Um, <laughs> That's why your text should not come up okay. on your computer. Yeah, exactly. um, but it's everybody yeah. around you. Yeah. And so you can learn something from anyone yeah. that you're around. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I think like I can think of some people who that I look for look to them for like a mentorship or like knowledge or wisdom because they're very wise in this one area. Yeah. Now I may not respect how they um treat people or whatever, I don't know, but like in this area, I'm like 
they are very wise when it comes to um, writing a business plan, yeah. you know, whatever. And so that was one of my favorite things because I think so often people think, oh, I have to have one mentor. And yeah, no there has only, there's been like a part of my life where I would think like I had like a pretty solid mentor. And then I think I kind of adopted this version of, you know, it can be a book, a podcast, an author, you know, it can be um, every interaction. And that's more who I am. Every interaction, I will take something positive or negative from it. Either yeah. I don't want to be like this or I do want to be like this yeah. and, and kind of take good. it and grow from there. What about someone who wants to be mentored by you? Um, what do you mean? What do I look for? I think it's, I think it's the same thing. I think Mm -hmm. like when he like wrote, when he was writing and he said, you know, they, they have to, it has to be their idea Yeah. and they have to drive it because if I'm driving it, it's not helpful. I think it's weird if I can't want it more than you. And I go, Hey, I want to mentor you. (laughs) Okay. But you know, every now and then, every now and then I'm like, I, cause you can see so much potential in somebody. And you're like, you need to let somebody help you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I even have I somebody in my life right now that I'm like, I can see that their business can be so much better if they would let me help them. There you go. Uh, but I'm, and even today I was walking out to my car and I was thinking, I should just call them. I should just call them. And I was like, no, because they have to want it. They, gotta, they yeah. have to want to be, be better coachable. and be coachable. And they're yeah. not. So what's funny is you said the that the whole mentor part was being able to, the 365, be able to look at. I love that. Or the 360 view. Every, yeah, everybody whatever, read it. Whatever so, said. Yeah. did you see the example of Seinfeld? Yes. The most, the most popular Seinfeld yes, episode I did was by see accident. That. Yes. But it was also intentional because he said it was a scene where. Um, it was a dentist. Yeah, Brian was fiddling mm-hmm. with the mask. He heard a voice somewhere above that suggested, um, hey, why don't you uh, take a whiff of yeah. the nitrous oxide first? And the scene might be funnier. Well, the person that told him that was a janitor. That yeah, was he was just like, hey, yeah, life. I think it'll be funny. And so Brian takes the man's advice, and the scene became one of the most memorable in history of the series. And he talks about mentorship is everywhere. So that guy Brian was the dentist and was just going to go and you know put the mask on Jerry and right, but, but it was it was he listened to somebody yeah. else. He didn't think I'm better. He doesn't know. Exactly. What does he know exactly. about this? So I put that mentors uh, don't have to be someone you, you actually know. For me, it's, again, I think of Louis Giglio, mm-hmm. I think of Jocko. Uh, they can, they, it can be a podcast, it can be books, several books, it can be pastors, it can be teachers. Um, yeah. Well, and like I, like I said a minute ago, I love that it, it's, you can be mentored by everyone in your life. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think there are people that you seek it out from a little bit more, like you talked about Louis Giglio mm-hmm. and Jocko, like you seek out their information when they yeah. put something out, yeah. you know, that you, you want, you're going to read it, you're going to consume it, you're going to listen to it. Yeah. Um, and then I think it's just, some of it is just people in your life that yeah. you have a relationship with. And you know, sometimes it's people that you don't want to hear from, but you know, you need to, like mm-hmm. a lot of people don't like Dave Ramsey, but he has a lot of good things to mm-hmm. say. Um, whether you like it or not, he, he does. Uh, and I think that's a really good example of you may not agree with everything that he says or does. It's not it's not immoral mm-hmm. or unethical, yeah. but you just might not agree with He's it. He's an expert in his but, field. Yeah, but you can there's a lot that you can take yeah, away exactly from him and even just how he built his business. So Colin Powell, um, he said this, he said the day the day soldiers stop bringing you their problem is the day you stop leading them. They have either lost confidence in you that you can help them or concluded that you don't care. Either case is a failure of leadership. Yeah. And man, he was over so many of our soldiers. Um, but yeah, that's interesting because the day they can stop coming to you with their problems, you might want to go, hey, why are, why are we not talking about things as a staff or as a company? Um, yeah. Well, do you think like in that, I think about that that is kind of like a personal, like I'm coming to you like, I don't know how to solve this. I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. You know, not as much, you know. Like chain of command. Not as much chain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, hey. Yeah. I have an issue at home and I need some advice or something. Yeah. Yeah. So I just put action steps, you know, who are your mentors mm-hmm. and are you listening to anyone else better than you? And when you talk about, you know, if you're the smartest person in the room, oh, find in your room. Yep. Was that this book that said that or was it another book? It doesn't matter. I think it was this one. Yes. Was it? Yeah. I think. Whatever. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> no idea. <laughs> but really, who are your mentors and are you listening to anyone else better than you? And uh, yeah, are you coachable? So chapter 14. Leading with purpose. Uh, he talked about two purposes here. 
and what's your purpose, personal purpose. So that's like personal growth. Like what do I believe? What are my values? What is like my why? So personal purpose and then organiza organizational purpose, which the people that you work for, or the organization that you work for, or you're a part of. And at some point, I think that they're two totally different things. Like me personally walking in to an organization I'm working with, their organizational purpose and my organization or my purpose have to at some point uh, come together. Yeah, they have to align, align. I think is like That's the word that he align. uses. Yes. yes, and I thought about that. Mm -hmm. You, I don't. You cannot be a part of an organization or work for an organization if your personal purpose and mission don't align with that. Yeah. If it is completely opposite, mm -hmm. you would you couldn't do it. I think you become. You probably become. Uh, I don't know, not bitter, but you. Pro there's there's differences. Yeah. And I know this isn't a Bible thing, but. The whole you can't serve two masters. Yes. You're going to be pulled in one direction to go. Uh, like I said, I put it on here: materialism and manipulation, or you're leading with your heart to go. Hey, this is about people, not mm -hmm. materials. Uh, whatever we're selling. So yeah, you, as you discover your purpose as an individual, I think you need to look at where you work and understand: is there am I upset where I'm working, and is it because we're off somewhere? Well, and I think that like a really practical example is if you are very people, customer service driven, like you really believe mm -hmm. in the customer's always right, you know, whatever. And then you're working for an organization that is all about like the bottom dollar, making yeah. the sale, ha tough. you know, ha yeah, um, <clears throat> just that, that whole idea of it's all about making money mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter. We're going to, we're going to manipulate and cut the customer down, whatever we have to do yep. to make more money. And what's so interesting is we have a friend that works for like a big, um, a big company. And I had, I had been telling them, like, I don't really like to shop there anymore. Like, I don't like to mm -hmm. go there. Like it just doesn't even feel right anymore. And he was very, he was, he was able to say, I can tell you mm -hmm. what happened. And I can tell you, cause everything I was complaining about, um, and he said they got a new manager and she's yeah. all about the numbers. And I was like, that's it. Yeah. Like, I, it is a huge difference than the way it was a year ago. And, and yeah, we said that people can smell it. Yeah, they, you can. Yeah. You totally can. And so I'm, I know that, that that's very hard for people. Yeah, because even if they're one degree off, the more years you stay, the, the bigger mm -hmm. the degree, the, the bigger the gap is between your values and theirs. And it's it going to show at some yeah, point. It doesn't feel right. Yeah, I put, uh, this is what Start With Why by Simon Sinek was all about. It's all over this. It's, it's team your team must know, um, our teams must know our why. Like if we're leading a team, they must know your purpose and it's your why, not so much how. So why do we exist as a team? What's our purpose? Um, and he talks about repeating it, uh, repeating the why consistently and allowing your team to lead. So not so much the how and the what, but share your why with your team and then let them figure out the how and the what to, to actually put that into place. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, he he talks about this. How you know you give if you give your team a strong enough why, you don't tell them how to do something. No way. You know, because yeah, they're bought in. Right. And he, I don't know if this is the chapter. That, I think it might be the next chapter. He talks about it about how when you give the why, you don't just give the why and walk away. You're going to give the why. Yeah. And as right. they figure out the how, you're going to be right there walking with mm -hmm. them. Saying like giving them some guidelines, yeah, yeah like, good job. You expect. Yes, he calls it directing, but yeah, in the next chapter, you're right. I think the leader has to keep the why out front so that purpose does not get lost. And I think that's uh, that is one of the videos that we mentioned. I did a video day before yesterday, mm -hmm. um, and it was all about again. I think we understand the mission statement, the vision at some point when we get hired, but if we're not continually bringing it back to that, then people get lost and then they start to focus on numbers. They start to focus on a product and you go, no, that's not what we're about. We're about people. You have to, if you're the leader, you have to bring the purpose and the mission back in front of you at all times. Well, and he gives an example in here about um, the leader articulating the purpose and that if that's not happening, what happens is the organization starts to go in a lot of different directions. Yep. And if it's not a clear one mission, one purpose, and he used the example of it's like 10 people rowing in a boat and That's you'll good. just end up going in circles. Yep. And that example was so good because I've seen that in so many organizations mm -hmm. where you don't have a clear why and everybody's kind of fighting for their own purpose and their own thing. And you do, you just keep going in circles. And yep. it is, it's usually the strongest leader 
on the team yeah. is the one that's that's making you just spin because yeah. he they they keep trying to bring it back to their own purpose what they think it should be yeah and if you're the leader of that organization you can't be sitting down on the boat you need to be looking where you're going and going hey that's where we're going so everybody start rowing in that direction well i think so many times i uh, you know what you see is you have this for the, the analogy the boat is just going in circles and the leader is like quit going in circles quit doing this mm -hmm. go this do this and instead of saying this hey is this is why you forget where that's we're good. going here's the purpose Mm -hmm. And let's stop what we're doing. Let's say the purpose again. Let's believe in it. Let's have some buy-in. <laughs> yeah. And let's all go in the same direction. Yeah, and I think if you're an organization where people have forgotten the why and you haven't really done this, don't don't beat yourself up. Just begin to ask. I think what we've done with uh, multiple clients is we just say, hey, ask ask the purpose, the mission statement. And if people can't say it, say, oh, hey, here's an opportunity that I get to share it with them. And hey, this is something we're going to start asking you guys. Like, what's the mission? What's the purpose behind so, the organization? Well, I took that. We were at um, a training and sitting around the table, and I asked some people, like, hey, like, what, what, yeah. you know, what is your mission? Yeah. What's the purpose of, yeah. you know, the, the organization that you're <clears> with? <throat> and I think there was five people at the table, and two of them didn't know it. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm like, you have been a part of this organization yeah. for six months and a year, and you can't tell me. Yeah. And, and, to me, it, that's the leaders. I mean, you have to, we have to be saying it over and over and over. Not in an annoying mm -hmm. way, but when you have an event or when you have a, a new product, it's not about the product, it's about the mission. You gotta revisit every time you do something, the mission or the vision of your organization. Well, I think it's also, whenever you are, like, let's say you have a new product or you mm -hmm. have a new, you know, um, something that you're going for, I think you also have to say is, does this fit our mission of mm -hmm. blank, 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 mm -hmm. blank? And, you know, how does this emphasize it or make it grow? Or does it fit? Yeah. You yeah. know, I, if we're, if you believe in one thing, and then what well, he uses an example in here about a call center, you know, and, yeah. and so if you believe in customer service, but all of your metrics are about how fast you're getting off the call, you're not rewarding the right thing. Yeah, that's two it, different purposes. It's two different purposes. And I think that that is exactly what happens. Yeah, you're right. And I think that's, again, as the leader or as the owner, you have to ask yourself, do my people know the purpose? Mm -hmm. Action step really quick. Do you do you know your team's purpose, like your why? And is it communicated consistently? And I ask your team, ask your people. Yep. And I think more, I think that even for me, for several of the organizations we work with, I can tell you what it is. But I, you know, I think if you took it one step further and says, what does that mean to you as somebody on this team? Yeah. You know, you are, if it's customer service, you know, you're in charge of whatever, you know, yeah. making new sandwiches. So how does our mission of make keeping it 100, how does that That's play good. into where you are? Slab. Oh, I know, I, I use slab as an example there, but all the yeah. way through. Yeah, because it means nothing just to have it on the, uh, the wall. You have to yeah or i mean i can rattle it off but if i don't know how it applies to my area to my role, yeah doesn't matter that's good so yeah how often do you communicate it's so a chapter 15 champion wait yes champion championing execution championing wait championing <laughs> championing championing <laughs> no it's championing <laughs> yes. it's championing yes execution yes. okay that i think fun. i think this chapter is just right to the point he shared a formula that he uses when he's taking on a project, and you mentioned it earlier, and he broke it down into three parts, visualize, describe, and direct. I see that your book is highlighted. Yeah, yeah. With, look, if you, if you see two different colors in my book, that's big. Because that means I what reach for it? another highlighter. Oh, gosh. Um, what is it? it it's, I think I read this to you earlier. Leaders can delegate authority to a subordinate for a managing project, but a leader cannot delegate responsibility. At the end of the day, the leader is still responsible for success or failure. That's called extreme ownership. It, it's called extreme ownership. But what I like is I think that sometimes, I think it's a good like definition of when we say like you need to give them over like you need to let your give your team the ownership you need mm -hmm. to let your team take charge you can but you are still ultimately responsible yeah and you can never delegate <clears throat> responsibility and That's good. i have so many times so many times i've seen a leader throw it on the person who didn't do yeah, a good job the, yeah yeah you, you hear it and then uh -huh. hey why well, didn't do that well did, did you you're, you're, you're the supervisor you, yeah you are responsible for that. And then he also, in the same chapter, he talks about how leaders, 
whatever, wherever the leader is giving their time and attention, mm -hmm. that that is what shows people what's important. Yep. And so I yep. thought about that and I thought, well, what about a leader who gives like their time and attention to everything? Yeah, you know? that is, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, that's that you're going to, you're, you're burning the, what I kind of wanted to say like micromanage, but that's, I kind of like that, like they're involved in every single yeah. aspect, mm -hmm. then I, you can probably say this better than me, but I'm like, if you're involved in everything, then nothing's really important because yeah. everything, if everything's important, then nothing's really important. Yeah. And nothing's getting done. Yeah, you right. you're, you're, every arrow that you're shooting is going to something different and it's not going to get hit. Mm -hmm. You're going to miss it all. So when he talks about visualize, he talks about that's the purpose. Like, where are we going? What's the end goal? Visualize. You have to tell your team, this is what we're visualizing. He talked about describing. Uh, so you visualize, describe, it's, here's the plan. Uh, why are we doing this? And um, or why we are doing this. So describe is the plan. Direct is what you were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Come back and direct the team in the guardrails. Make sure they're, you're not micromanaging. You're just making sure that they're headed in the direction of the why. Um, and again, if you completely, or if you continue to state the why, then you're staying on target. But if you're not, then you're going to be going yeah. in circles. Well, I think a good like part like for the direct, I think that's where it kind of gets great, is what I think is, is they can have teams and people that are doing things and they're, they're leading and then they're going to come back and you guys are going to touch base. Mm -hmm. You're going to inspect what you expect mm -hmm. at that point. It doesn't mean that you have to be in every single yeah, no. meeting. Exactly. But if you're not meeting with your leads, <clears throat> then they're going to look at what you think is important. Like, obviously not us. Yeah. So, yeah, inspect what you expect. Again, easy chapter. Champion, championing, execution. execute. Let's just let's just call it execute. Yeah. Was that your dog's? Yeah. Stomach, yeah. Was... I think so. I think she was. I think she was. <laughs> I don't know what she's doing over there. Okay. Chapter sixteen. Uh, you, you get, get what, what you, you reward. reward. I love this. Again, I said it, it may be common sense, but for me, there was an aha moment, and this is the one where I, I think you and I had this conversation oh, yeah. about metrics. Like, yes. He talks about metrics, and he talks what you're measuring as a team, so you can be successful. Mm -hmm. and your metrics be great, right? Or you can be unsuccessful and your metrics still be great, meaning mm -hmm. we're trying to, the conversion rate of our score is everyone's buying something as they leave, but they're not happy with you because you're rushing them. No, your conversion rate's great. Who cares? But your 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 uh, metric should be the five stars that the, 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 the uh, customers What you want. value. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, there was another book that we read that talked about this. It was almost the, he, it was almost like the same example of, yeah. you know, they say they value yep. one thing, but they were rating the people almost something different. It was different. the same so thing, they, call center. Yeah, call they, center. Changed, yep. they changed the metrics and I was like, okay. Oh no, yeah, the lady started her own mm -hmm. business because she, her purpose didn't align with theirs. Their debt collection. Yeah, they I were a debt, debt collection, collection and they said, hey, we want to help people with their yeah. debt, but really they weren't. They were just trying to get these get calls their money. Out. Mm -hmm. So one lady said, hey, I'm going to go start my own debt collection and I'm going to help them. And she helped so many people because yes. she changed her metric. Yes. I think that was in the start of the line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the key for organization is that um, match up, I wrote this down, match up your dang metrics with your yeah. goals and purpose. Yeah, your dang metrics. Like, like we are, on. we are serious. We're about to cuss. I put that all in. Yeah. On caps. <laughs> so whatever we say is important as an organization. Uh Right. So, okay. So let's do like a little bit of a like example. So if your, whatever your mission statement is, that is really what your metrics should be. Yeah. If that's what you value. Yeah. So if your mission, like, I mean, if it would, I, you, you, to use slab as an example, I think it's a really easy one to say, you know, if you're, if you keep it 100, if it is, you know, we're, everything we do, we're going to do great. Yeah. You know, but if the guy in the back is only focused on making 15 new sandwiches a week, and not yeah. doing a good job, yeah. or not cleaning, it's, or, 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 or if that, if that's or... what if that's what you're measuring him on. I need you to make as many sandwiches, new mm -hmm. brand new sandwiches a week that you can. Yeah. And he's rushing. And he's, he's rushing. He's not he's not, attention to keep. So your the, those your metrics don't line up. Yeah. And I think that that happens in more businesses than we think. I yeah. think that's probably a bigger problem. I totally agree. Than we realize. You're, you're measuring the wrong things. Your metrics were the wrong in the wrong area. And now I realize what I said. Uh, whatever we say is important as an organization is what people will do. Yes. So if you say something is important, they're going to go, hey, then that must be important. They're going to start doing that. But if it's not lined up with your metrics, mm -hmm. then of course 
your metrics are going to be wrong because you're telling people something else is important. So we've also talked about along that same line is like whatever you tolerate, that's what people, you know, that's what they say is like whatever you tolerate, that's what the direction yeah, they're going to go. It's not what you preach, so, it's what you tolerate. So if you're rewarding them <clears throat> by tolerating something, you're still not going in the right direction. Exactly. Nope. And it has to all, again, the word was aligned. You used this earlier. If we're more concerned about productivity than professionalism, the productivity will be on point. But does that line up with what we want? Well, and one of the things that, that he talks about is like he talked about for him, his um, what, I don't what do you call it? Not troop, but his group of men, yeah, whatever, yeah, called, his, whatever company. Mm -hmm. That resiliency was one of the things he was trying to build in. So yeah. every year he gave a resiliency award, mm -hmm. and I think that that is that's a really easy way to highlight because then all year you're focused, you as a leader are focusing on that. How yeah. am I building this into my people? Mm -hmm. Where am I seeing this? And so I think you're kind of subconsciously rewarding that within them. And then at the end, you're, you're giving it value. Yeah. And um, when I read that, I just thought, wow, I think sometimes we make it so complicated when he was like, I want to build resiliency. I'm going to give an award at the end of the year. Yeah. Well, great. Good job, buddy. Yeah, and that's his metric, right? And that's, and that's it. That's what he's trying to build into. Yes. So uh, my, I think the action step that, that I had here, it says, does your team know the metrics they're shooting for? And are the metrics people-centered or project-centered? Yeah, and you know, are, does your team even have metrics? Does your organization have metrics? Mm -hmm. Or is it just, we're just going to complete the next thing? Yeah. You know? Do you even stop to think about what are, what do you value do you and yeah, what are you yeah, measuring? Yeah, you're right. That's good. And That's I think, really you know, good. because even like if you take Slab for an example, I think in a restaurant, it's very easy to say we're going to do it by the amount of money that we make every day or mm -hmm. every week or whatever. Um, and so it's how do you as a team put a metric on keeping it 100? Yeah. You know, you, and I think that's. <clears throat> Yeah. That's the challenge. But it's like you said, it's it's what you tolerate. So if you're constantly talking about keeping 100 and, and your team knows that and you talk about having each other's back, then that's what they're more concerned about. They're going, hey, we have each other's back. Don't let it fall. Yeah, that's good. Man, that's really good. Chapter 17, goals should be more than smart. Um, this chapter, uh, yeah, this is just a chapter that I'm going back to because... I really want to sit down and discuss this with myself in my mm -hmm. mind and visualize the part where you talk about visualize. Mm -hmm. um, I know my why is locked in. Now I just need to start visualizing in my mind and creating like this plan. Stepping onto like the private jet to whisk you away <laughs> to your... <laughs> well, yeah. I think, is this the chapter mm -hmm. that he talked about? Um, there was a POW and he played the golf course yep. in his mind over and yep. over, which I've heard that before, yep. but it is such a good reminder yeah. of like, your mind is very powerful. Yeah. You can visualize yourself into something. And, uh, I mean, think about it. We think about so many negative things because you're visualizing what could happen and you are freaked out. So why not use it for good? I mean, listen to this quote. It's so good. I put, listen to this dang quote. It's so good. <laughs> It is important to commit to one's goal to paper and visualize achieving the goal. In the mind's eye, one should see fulfillment of the goal. Here it is. The mind completes whatever picture we begin to paint into it. Yes. The mind completes whatever picture we begin to paint into it. Yes. And I it, and it goes both ways. If you're yeah. painting a negative picture, that's the way that you're totally. going to go. And I said one of the things that I learned in this uh leaning on empty was he just said the lens your the lens your brain is what is telling you what you see so if you're constantly seeing negative then you're negative your eyes are just the lens mm -hmm. so what you pay attention to is what your mind's going to think about all the time so i think that we have to begin to actually physically visualize this is what i'm going to do this is what i want to to accomplish and i think so many i mean you can take the golfing i mean i'm sure mm -hmm. all the golfers sit there and go this is the way i want to uh make it work so when he talks about smart goals, um, but we want you to better. <laughs> he talks about it, it smart talks, goals. It's like specific, <laughs> measurable, attainable, and relevant. Yes. And there, what, what's the T? There should be one more. Oh, come really? on now. Okay. Um, well, what, real quick, what, specific. What, what's the T? The, the S in smart is specific. Make sure that they are to the point, like not just hey, I want to earn uh, ten thousand dollars this month. No, how are you going to do that? Break that down. Measurable. It has to be measurable. Hey, I want to eat lunch with four of our clients 
for the next four weeks and this is what it's going to cover and, and you're measuring it by going this is the goal attainable attainable is you got to make sure that it's even you're able to do it because if you're not then yeah i'm going to make a million dollars this week uh okay whatever um make it attainable. i'm like i'm relevant. still i'm still looking for like the t i'm like um relevant meaning why would we not uh if, well, if we're talking like, about why doesn't he just list these like why why do i have to just get Did a you list find the no because he i don't see it in like a it's gotta be like traceable or something no time sensitive smart time sensitive right there there it is yep. yep so yeah how i like i think that's right. one that we forget to put well, is what yeah am i gonna do this? What are you, and he he talks about what we've talked about so many times breaking your goals down into like you know steps and mm -hmm. stuff but one of the things that he mentions on here that i really like because i think people miss it a lot with goals and we've we've mentioned it is that when you're writing your goals he talks about you have to know what are my obstacles going to be what exactly. who are, what are yeah. my resources visualize what's gonna, yes. what's going to come what, what's going to come away because you know that and i love that he thinks about that ahead of time and one of the ways i've heard it said is like what is it costing me not to reach this goal yeah you know and what am i going to gain good. and what are the people around me going to gain when i reach this mm -hmm. goal and so it's adding a little bit more to it's it. a little bit more work but he says it right there he says um the action plan should identify obstacles and risks to reaching goals yes. but then there's benefits of reaching the goals the skills the trainings and education required the people who can help and the resources i'm going to need to achieve the goals so it's actually breaking it down enough to go and these are all the things I'm going to need to reach this goal. Mm -hmm. Like take one, I know we can have five or six goals, but take one and probably a couple hours, just spend time on that one visualizing. This is what it's going to look like, but here's what I need. Here's what I, what, here's the people I need around me. Here's the team I need. Visualize. It. Yeah. Here are the people that, yeah, here's people that can help me. And then he also says setbacks are inevitable while yeah, trying to get attain a goal. And I think that is something that, I mean, we don't want to be negative about it, but I think it's so, good gracious, I think it's so okay. true. <laughs> no, no, no. I think it's so true is that there's so many, there, you're always going to have a setback, mm -hmm. always going to have a setback. And it's just one of those mm -hmm. things that you have to plan and prepare for. Yeah, I think you prepare your mind. One of the things that I remember telling, uh, I think Etiana told a couple people that worked for me that were putting in their notice at their place of employment mm -hmm. was I just said, hey, I need you to sit down and think about what it's going to feel like when you're excluded from a meeting. Tell me what it's going to look like or tell yourself what it's going to feel like when they go to lunch and you have to stay here. Get those feelings ready because when that time comes, you should be able to go, no factor. I got this. And I've played that over and over again, going from secondary to, to primary. And to me, I'm just going, you know, there's so much more uh, uh, freedom in the fact that I'm pursuing a goal. Not freedom in the fact that mm -hmm. I don't yeah. enjoy my work, but, but freedom in the fact that my goal is more important than a feeling that I feel of exclusion or whatever. So. Well, and I like that um, he also kind of talks about how, um, <clears throat> you know, when you're setting a goal and reaching a goal, that it, it's more than just your goal. It's everything that you just yep. said, the skills that you obtain, mm -hmm. the good that you're doing to people around you, for your organization, for yourself personally. Mm -hmm. And I think so many times we get so focused on the goal and it becomes like a checklist. Yep. And to, to really think, how is this affecting, how is this going to affect or how did it affect yep. everybody in my life? And I think even with you, like you just mentioned, going from primary to secondary or whatever yep. it is, you know, you think that that has made an impact on your family yep. and will continue to make an impact on your mm -hmm. family. And I think that as you achieve that goal more and more, it's like, you have to realize that, you yeah. know, it wasn't just about, you know, making the step to make made for more be your primary, yeah. you know, it also, there's lots of other benefits that came with it. So it's, I think it makes the goal mean more and it's not just about, okay, I did it's that. Not, yeah. Again, it's not the end result. It's the path that you go. You've got to be intentional on this path because you're going to miss so many things and you don't want to miss those things. Yes. One, I did think one of the things he says in here is he, for the action steps, he talks about like, you know, set your goals and then, you know, gather the people around you and he used the word accountable and I laughed. Yeah, um, yeah. But, I, but the way, but I did notice that's the only time he's ever said that. Mm -hmm. He always talks about, you know, I get a group of people around yeah. you, you yeah. know, use their wisdom, <clears throat> use their resources, let them yeah. help you, 
which I think is really what he's saying. Yeah, I think um, when he was on Jocko's podcast, Adam Adams actually from Pro Wired Electric was telling me he listened to this on uh, Jocko. Mm -hmm. And when he brings up accountability, he tells Jocko, what I mean by this is you're taking ownership of what you are trying to accomplish by letting other people know. So yes. he, he, I mean, he doesn't correct himself. That's what he meant. So I, yeah. well, and I cannot imagine like reading this guy that he's like, well, I'm just going to wait for somebody else to tell me what to do. Yeah. No way. No. no. So smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time uh, sensitive. sensitive. Yeah. Man, last chapter, chapter 18, getting, getting by in. We're, we're, we're having all kinds we're of things. We're having all kinds of going on today. Um, getting by in, chapter 18. Um, have you ever had, Adina, have you ever had to take over a team where they said, hey, you need to, you need to turn this, I, I'm bringing you here to turn this ship around? Yeah, no, I don't, I can't, I cannot. Oh, yes, I have. Okay. Yes, I have. Yeah. Yes, I have. Yeah, I have. The, I have no one The added pressure. Uh, well, for me, because of my because of my like mind. personality, yeah. though, I'm like, oh yeah, like a challenge, like let's go. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I think it was good. There was just in that time period, there was there was just a lot of things that had happened and that were kind of going on, and they really wanted it to kind of go in a different direction. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, think, it is it is different. Yeah, and I think in the corporate world, people think that hey, I'm coming to take this team over, so I'm going to crack the whip. I'm going to get them in shape, and if they don't, they're fired. That says a lot of negativity about the leader coming in. Yeah. You want to come in and go, hey, uh, who can I keep? How do I how do I get to know them? I remember taking over a store that was much larger than the one I was running, and they said, hey, you're going to be a market leader. You're going to be over six stores, but this store, they're going to come in. People already had their their I guess thoughts about me. And so I needed to switch those thoughts on them to go. You're an easy person to have thoughts about. Whatever. <laughs> so I had to switch those things because they knew that the standard at that store I was coming to was, hey, the manager is a pushover. He doesn't, everybody calls in. He doesn't have goals. So when I came over, I was like, hey, I gave him pizza. We had a meeting. I said, but here's how things are going to go. Um, and I'm not going to fire anybody. But... Um, We'll get as many hours as you deserve because of your work ethic. And here's my you, expectation. Yeah, and and so, but it's building trust. It's not coming in here going, "Hey, I heard, hey you, I heard you don't know how to mop. You're fired." <laughs> hey, I know, I didn't. We don't come in there doing that. Yeah. You can't. You gotta earn trust. Um, well, and I think yeah. that it's kind of the same. Is that if you come in with a big vision and wanting something different. People want to be a part of that. Exactly. You know, and yep. so I think it's it's just a reminder to, to come in knowing what you bring to the table and what the goal that you want, mm -hmm. you know, for, for your team. So think about raising teenagers or kids oh, or yeah. even being a, uh, being a youth pastor for so many years, but then having a conversation that I have with my daughter. And it's trust. It's somewhat trust, but it's also going, kids want some kind of boundaries. Even yes, when they push they against that. And you put that in place, they they breathe easier because they go, they care about me. And when an employee knows that you care about them, they're going to breathe easier and they're going to get on board with what you have. So make sure that you invest in people the right way. This uh, quote right here says, leaders get paid to transform organizations. Leaders are expected to change an organization from its current state into something better. This is, here's, this is good. This is one of the differences between a manager and a leader. Managers seek to keep the organization stable. And leaders seek to drive change. Yes. Yes. So yeah, I think every book that we've read has the key word of building trust and teamwork or turning it around or turning something around. And it always comes back to trust and teamwork. Um, and it always comes back to how do you build trust? And let me give about you know, all three of us that conversation. About that. Is just how do you build trust? Just ask your team what you think, what they think we should do. Like stop and yeah. don't have all the ideas. Just say, hey, how do you think we should do this? Yeah, we we talk about. I feel like we talk about that like <clears throat> every week. Yeah, but don't and then don't be the the type that you've already accomplished in yeah. what you want to do. I can't. You can. I cannot wait for next week because I told you I read ahead and he. There's a couple of things <laughs> that he talks about that. That's awesome. You know about yeah, like not making the decision ahead of time. Yeah. You already and, know what you want, so just do it. Then. Yes, and you might as well. That is that's one of the things that he he learned from like a mentor, yeah. you know, and because that's what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And oh my goodness, so many times. Yeah. I think for that. me, I was driving over here thinking about this, and I thought, 
how discouraging it is to get to the Wizard of Oz and realize it's a it's one person behind the the curtain, right? Have you ever seen the Wizard of Oz? <laughs> I, I guess not. Yeah, the, and, but and like it's, the, so they're they're disappointed that it's one person because <laughs> they think it's a wizard, a big wizard, and it's one small person behind yeah. the curtain. Meaning, as a team, if your team found out that you already had the plans scheduled and all the things that you're trying to do and you really didn't need them, that's one of the most or discouraging you, And things. I think, too, are like, or you don't value them. You know, you that's call your feel, team right? in they and you're like, them. we're, you know, what do you think about this? And we're going to do mm -hmm. this. And what do you want to do? And then you yeah. go and then they're like, okay. And then they do what they wanted to yeah, do that's anyway. A, that's a discouraging thing. Very team discouraging. Yeah. So show you that show them that you value them. Don't just tell them. Show them. Um, if you think you're the smartest person in the room, get a new room. Yeah, find another room. Yes. Yeah. Well, and we talked about this last week, but I think one of the things I'll say about you know valuing your team is that he talked about last week or in the the character um, section that if you ask your team for their opinions and you end up going a different direction. Go yeah. back and revisit that. Yeah, please let do. them let them know yep. why. You know, um, and I think that as a leadership, you do know more. You do have maybe more. You know, maybe more about the situation behind the scenes that you didn't share or yeah. a different experience or or something. But um, that builds trust, yeah. and that that will make your team grow for sure. So we still have quite a few chapters. I think we're we still have we're probably gonna have this podcast. No, no, it's a good book. Well, it is a good book. <laughs> we'll we'll still have lots of, I feel like we're almost done. Three more podcasts. Okay. I think. So yeah. Yeah, I can see that. You're gonna break we're gonna break this because this competence section is two more set like two more podcasts. Yeah. And then the last one is one. So uh guys, that's that's we're that's yeah, part of competence that's right part there. Of competence. Man, go back, make yes. notes on those things. Yes. Um, and make sure that you, uh, yeah, just try to apply this to whatever team you're 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 a part of. If you're leading it, if you're not the leader, man, ask. I mean, buy the. I'm, maybe we could buy the dang book for, for your whole leader. team. You know, I would be interested. You know, because this has been such a good book. Um, it's probably been one of my favorite. My favorite one this year for yeah, sure. It's crazy. And uh, it's yeah, one. she it better. <laughs> 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 but the point is, is I would, I want to know what other people think of this book. Like when you're listening to it, yeah. are, are we, are we conveying it? Are, you know, are people buying mm -hmm. this book? Are they reading it? I feel like we should get a kickback from this author. And so like. He posted something today of should... like a, a street in Florida and it's all the palm trees. And then one of the palm trees is like awkwardly like shaped, I guess. And he just put, Hey, live the lead, live to to lead different and be different. And it was pretty cool. I mean, he doesn't promote himself. He's he's an older gentleman. Uh, pretty cool though. I mean, again, one of the best books that we've read so far. Uh, so again, these action steps, we'll list them, but who are your mentors? And are you listening to anyone better than you? Do you know your team's person purpose and is it communicated effectively and, and consistently? Um, now I'm scrolling through his Instagram. <laughs> and again, does your team know your metrics that you're shooting for your that, and, and, and are they centered around projects or people? And to me, I think that's for like what I think about. I think that is like stop right now. And if you, if you are a leader of an organization or a team and ask yourself, what are our metrics and what is our mission and do they let it? And if you're willing, ask your team what they think about it. Yeah. Cause I wonder if your team would have a different yeah, because hey, why are you why why are you here? Why are you working? Mm -hmm. Well, it's just here to do this. Mm -hmm. Now you're so far off. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's this. this so good. This, Wrapping uh, it up. Yeah, this podcast, guys. Uh, we would appreciate it if you give us a follow on the socials, made for more consulting dot com, the number four on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and then give us a like on uh, whatever wherever you listen to your podcast yeah. this week. We heard that uh, most of it's Apple iTunes. Yeah. Okay. So this Not week iTunes, on Apple, Apple, Apple Podcasts, I think it was on Facebook. You must have like posted the podcast. Well, it happens okay, now every well, week. Okay, but but this <laughs> is what it was. Was I got a when it came? It had like subscribe and it, like right there on Facebook, and I have never seen that before. Yeah. That you could subscribe 
yeah. like not on, even on the mm. on your podcast platform. I don't know. So if I was like, Buzzsprout, oh, looky there. I don't even know if Buzzsprout is picking up that people listen to it on Facebook yet. Like as their um, mm -hmm. one of their like a metric. Yeah, because really right now, uh, and maybe they do, but like Etiana mm -hmm. started, she signed yeah. us up for Facebook. Not too long ago because okay. Facebook just started that. Yeah, uh, I think it, I um, was very nice. I was like, cool. "Looky there! Yeah. Look how fancy yeah. we are!" And uh, so, hey, like and subscribe to the podcast wherever yes. you listen to your podcast. But uh, it was it was definitely Apple Podcast, and then a couple of Spotify's. I was in Apple, and then what was there was like this other one that was interesting that somebody I don't I don't know. Nice. Anyways, so listen. Uh, yeah. I mean. Subscribe to yeah. our podcast. And you know, guys, yeah, I, we don't usually say this, but if you like the podcast, share it with someone. Yeah, like definitely. there's somebody in your life that you that can benefit from this. Yeah. Um yeah. And, and share it. Yeah, definitely. Um yeah. yeah. We appreciate you guys listening. Yeah, we do. And always remember we exist for more. We're here to offer more. Don't ever give up. Every single one of us is made for more. Talk to you guys later. Bye guys, have a good day. I always laugh because I'm, like, I'm, not, reading it. I'm that? not reading it, so I'm going to, I'm, I know I'm going to jinx myself. Oh, <laughs> no, what's up, guys? Bye, uh, YouTube. Later, mother. Scratchers. Dude, the dog. What the world? Your dog was, I was just worried. Y'all started laughing. I was like, what the heck's oh, going on? I'm trying to put this on upside down. Why is this not working? See y'all.